Senator Glenn. I'm not sure I got the whole thing, being the Courage. age I am. The right stuff. Yeah, repeat the question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. She wants to know where you get your courage from to climb on an Atlas rocket that has probably blown up more times than it flew right, and you rode it into orbit. She well, wanted to know how, how you got that courage. The people right say during launch, you know, that's the, uh, the most crucial time and where you're changing things the most and where all the thrust is on there. And what do you think about when you're getting ready to launch? And I think uh, the question goes back, uh, how do you think you'd feel if you knew you were on top of 20 million, 2 million parts built by the lowest bidder on a government contract? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the flippant answer. I think you, uh, you develop courage from a couple of areas. One, you're developed this by what your purpose is, the mission, you're dedicated to a mission, and by the preparation. Uh, and that gives you confidence you can really do this thing and you've really tried to, uh, to see all the aspects of it and all the things that can go wrong. You've tried to take care of those things before you launch. So I think it comes from two things. One, dedication to the country and what you, you think is important for the country. Back in the early days it was the competition with the Soviets who we weren't sure then were, might be taking over the world. And uh, then it's preparation and preparation and preparation. That gives you confidence to go. Well, sometimes when you're uh, confronted with a problem and there is no alternative, uh, you either had to have the courage to continue or you were lost. And consequently, uh, in Apollo 13, when the explosion first occurred uh, and we didn't know what happened, uh, and we at first didn't think we were in that danger until I saw the oxygen escaping from the spacecraft and then I realized that uh, we were in serious danger and we looked around to see what we had to use and the lunar module very fortunately was a part of our system. And then we worked very uh, closely with a dedicated group of people at the Mission Control Center which indicated to me that uh, the good leadership and the teamwork that evolved from that plus the initiative and the perseverance and the motivation of these people working with the crew indicated that Apollo 13 was not just a, another uh, space flight of, of dangerous situations, but really a classic case of crisis management. Neil Armstrong, uh, when you started to land Eagle on the moon, you found out, I believe, that they were heading you toward a crater that you didn't want to land in. And you had to fly your ship across the surface of the moon until you could find a spot to sit it down. I think you had 16 seconds of fuel left. Can you tell us what that was like? No pilot likes to land in a bad place. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, and pilots by nature will go to any extreme to find a good place to land. And that's what we did. And that's what you did. <laughs> but we would like to know from you, Neil, what it was like to step onto that moon and turn around and take your first steps and really learn how to walk and to traverse on the surface. We had a, a few people that thought it was going to be very difficult to uh, walk on the surface of them for whatever reasons they believed that to be true. And our simulations sometimes were a little bit difficult but the human is remarkably adaptive. And what we found out was that by the time we had just stood around in the cockpit for a couple hours, we were completely adapted. And when we walked down off of the, of the craft onto the surface, we already were right at home. And uh, you'd really like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. now, a lot of folks have asked me, well, you must be a real risk taker. And I really don't think that's true. I think I'm probably one of the most safety conscious people that I know. What I think I am is an opportunity seeker. And I think that's what has led me uh, to be part of the astronaut corps and to some of the other things that I've had an opportunity to do. And so I guess my only words of inspiration to an aspiring engineer and an aspiring astronaut is to seek out those opportunities. 
Um, I recently had a newspaper ask me, well, what, what was a key formative thing that happened to you that, think, that you think led to where you, uh, where you got to? And I recall being in college at Purdue University, and uh, I remember seeing in the Purdue newspaper a little article about the Purdue Skydiving Club. And it really consisted of one guy with a car that would drive out to the drop zone each weekend. <laughs> But it turns out, so I, I called that number and I started that, and that's what got me into aviation. I'm still involved in aviation and skydiving even today. But had I not seen that little tiny ad, had I not responded to it, had I not sought out that opportunity, this whole world that became open to me you know, a, a decade later would not have become open to me. And so I guess that's my only words of inspiration, is keep your eyes and ears open. Look for the tiniest opportunity to try something new, to seek out new people, new events, even like this, like today. And, um, and, and keep yourself open to that, because you have no idea where it might lead. Very good.